For this video, we're going to be discussing x and y intercepts. So what are intercepts? Well, an intercept is just a point where a graph crosses one of the axes. So the axes being our horizontal x-axis and my vertical y-axis. Alright, so an intercept is just one of these points where it crosses an axis. The x-intercept is where the line crosses the x-axis, all right? And we can think of this point as being some value x, and our value of y is simply zero. That's a zero, right? Because it's at zero for our y value. So when we have our x-intercept, y is always going to equal zero. This is gonna become important at some point. So we can say the x-intercept is always at the point x, zero. All right, and we're going to be figuring out what this x is. Similarly, the y-intercept we can say is at point zero y, because its x-coordinate is always going to be zero, and then its y-coordinate is just going to be some number. So in the y-intercept, then x equals zero, and our point is zero y. It's the important thing to remember is that the intercepts are just where the lines where the line crosses the x and y axes. So how do we figure out where these are? Well, to find the x-intercept, we're just going to plug 0 in for y and solve for x. Similarly, to find the y-intercept, we're just going to plug 0 in for x and solve for y. And whatever we get for the numbers, those are our x and y-intercepts. So let's take a look at an example of that. I want to find the x and y intercepts of 4x plus 7y equals 56. So let's start by finding the x intercept. Okay, let me write this up here. x intercept. So, the x intercept is always going to be at the point x0. Always x0. And we're not sure exactly what x is yet, but we know that the y is definitely 0. So we're just going to take these numbers and we're going to plug them in to our equation. The x stays x, but our y we now know is 0. So we know 4x plus 7 times 0 equals 56. So if we solve this out, well, 7 times 0, that's just 0. So I get 4x equals 56. Divide both sides by 4. Divide by 4 on both sides. I know that looks like a 7 and I get x equals 14. Whoa, moving stuff, moving the wrong thing around. So if we know that x equals 14, then our x-intercept is at the point zero, or 14, zero. All right, so all we did is we plugged in zero for y and solved for x. Now we're similarly going to do the same thing with our y-intercepts. All right, the y-intercept is always going to take the form 0y. We know x is 0, and y, we just leave y, and we're going to solve that for that. So we say 4 times 0 plus 7y equals 56. So 7y equals 56. If I then... Divide both sides by 7. 56 divided by 7 gives me 8. So y equals 8. So my y-intercept is the point 0, 8. So here we have our answers. An x-intercept of 14. And a, oh, I made a mistake here. No, I didn't. Sorry, I didn't make a mistake. We have an x-intercept of 14, 0, and a y-intercept of 0, 8. So these numbers are our x and y-intercepts. Some of you might be out there wondering, why do I bother figuring out my x and y-intercepts? Well, a couple of reasons. One of them is that these values will have meaning when we apply these to some word problems. Another is that if I go ahead and draw myself a little graph, here's my coordinate plane, all right? If I wanted to graph this equation, which is what this whole unit is about, I would know that I've got a point here, 
at 14, 0. And a point here at 0, 8. And if I want to draw a graph of my line, the graph of my equation, all I do is I take and I draw my line so that it goes between those two points. And there we go, I've graphed my equation using, whoa, not that, using my x and y intercepts. So that's a big reason why we find the x and y intercepts is so we can use them to graph. All right. So now we can find the intercepts from a graph. Now this should seem pretty obvious, pretty easy to everybody. Finding the intercepts from the graph is as simple as looking at locating the points where the line crosses each axis. Or, uh, to put it a little more simply, look at the graph. All you have to do is look at the graph and see, oh, okay, it crosses the x-axis here. It crosses the y-axis here. Well, what are those points? My x-intercept is at negative 1, negative 2. And you know that the y part is always going to be 0. My y-intercept, well, the x part's always going to be 0, and the y part is negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. So there we go. There's my x-intercept and my y-intercept. Pretty simple. We're going to be using this when we talk about writing equations in our next unit, and this is going to become very important. These points will become very important to us. So let's take a look at an example of that. Find the x and y-intercepts of this graph. Now, the first thing you should be noticing about this graph is that it's not linear. It is not a straight line. This is, in fact, a quadratic equation. It's curved. The only difference that we think of here is, well, hey, look, it crosses the x-axis twice. And in fact, that's true. Quadratic equations can have two roots, or two x-intercepts. We also call them the roots. In fact, quadratics can have two, one, or zero. But that's for another unit and another time. What's important now is that we know that even though there's two, they still both count. So looking at our graph, our x-intercepts, we've got one that's at negative one, zero, right here. We have one that's at three, zero. And then our y-intercept, it's only got one, it's down here at zero, negative three. So it's entirely possible that you could look at a graph and see that it has more than one of each type of intercept. And that's totally fine, all right? If you see that it has two like this, then it's gonna be a quadratic equation. The equations that we're gonna see the most, though, are going to be linear equations, and they're always straight lines that have one of each. So, I'm going to leave you with a triad problem, which is simply to find the x and y intercepts of each one of these functions. y equals 3x plus 9, and this graph right here. So all you need to do is find the x and y intercepts.